shall we begin? Let the games begin. All right, all right, all right. A new age has begun. An age of freedom. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? This is a chopper! This is going to be quite a ride. <laughs> And hello, everybody, and welcome to the Movie Bit Podcast. I am your host, Christian Renteria, and this is the podcast where we talk about all the big breaking movie news items of the week, along with the trailers that came out this week and the movies that are out in theaters and streaming for all your viewing pleasures. This week's kind of a weird week, scheduling-wise, for me, because I'm pretty sure I'm going to be recording this podcast in multiple different parts and multiple different places. So if uh, the audio gets a little wanky in some places, wanky, wonky, just, you know, forgive me for that. Uh, it's a, it's a weird, it's, it's a weird week this week and, uh, probably will be for, uh, at least the next, uh, couple of weeks. But, um, yeah, there is that, but, uh, I did want to get a podcast out this week cause, uh, there's a lot of cool stuff coming out, uh, this week. Uh, obviously WonderCon is going on right now. Uh, WonderCon, by the way, is, uh, pretty much, uh, the movie theater chain version of Comic-Con. It's, uh, pretty much where all the movie theaters, exhibitors, uh, investors and stuff like that for, uh, multiple, movie studios come together in las vegas and uh watch what the studio has in store for them and um there's been a lot of cool stuff that come that has come out through wondercon uh this week included so we'll uh we'll dabble a little bit in in wondercon news a lot of it is obviously stuff that the public will never see or just like little tidbits Uh, eventually we'll get to see them but uh you know there's a lot of trailer news and stuff that's come out through there and like sizzle reels but uh we're gonna stick just mainly to like the movie news i'm not gonna really cover WonderCon because it's really hard to really cover WonderCon when you know even the the you know descriptions of the trailers that come out are very uh limited um mainly just because sometimes there's not, not a lot there so um that was some of the case for what's come out so far with WonderCon this year but uh yeah there you go so um we'll dip into WonderCon every now and then we do have some big tidbits that have come out through WonderCon in the uh, in the news uh, section here today on the podcast, but uh, for the most part, we're gonna kind of steer away and just uh, not dive too much into it. But uh, but yeah, that's what we're gonna do. But of course, we're gonna start off the podcast like we always do here on the Movie Pit with trailer talk. Coming soon to theaters. Uh, we have a few trailers that dropped this week that I'm uh, really looking forward toward, and uh, the first trailer is for A24's newest horror film, uh, Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. This comes from actress turned director uh, Halleen. Ragin? I don't know if that's how you pronounce. Pretty sure that's not how you pronounce her last name, uh, but that's how I'm going to pronounce it because uh, I think that sounds cool. Uh, <laughs> that's not how you say her last name, though. I, I'm pretty sure. But uh, yeah, bodies, bodies, bodies. This has been uh, making waves at the film festivals uh, like Toronto and I think even uh, South by Southwest. But um, this is about a a, a, pr- a group of privileged twenty somethings parting parting it up in the remote family mansion in the middle of a hurricane before everything goes to hell when they decide to play the game bodies 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 which in the trailer it's basically pretty much just mafia or uh wolf or like cry wolf except of course here everyone is starting to get killed off one by one the movie has a pretty young cast uh, i think some uh, recognizable names that people will know amandala uh, steinberg who was um a very young rue in in the hunger games and she has gone on to do a bunch of other stuff like uh, the hate you give which is another one that i think she was uh mainly uh really um big on that one maria bakalova from uh the borat sequel she was also in the netflix film the bubble she's in there uh lee pace is in there uh ronan the accuser for all the uh mcu fans out there and pete davidson probably the biggest name out of the bunch that people will recognize he's in there as well uh this movie looks pretty interesting intriguing to say the very least i guess it does look like we're probably not we're probably not gonna like these characters i'm sure they'll be endearing in their own way but i think for the most part we are not gonna like these characters at all and sometimes when you have a movie like that it's very hit and miss you know sometimes the characters are too unlikable where you just don't care about them and you don't care about what happens to them and 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 result you don't care about the movie i don't think that's what's happening here obviously with you know a lot of positive uh, feedback has been coming especially from genre fans about this movie so i don't think that's necessarily the case for this one but you know the film festival circuit fans are very different from the you know uh regular fans or even the fans that you know like me who follow that film festival buzz and, and to some movies but you know 
we'll just have to wait and see on that one that being said the movie does uh look like it ha- will have its own unique style and tone uh the movie didn't like i mentioned make some waves at the film festival so uh maybe that will help it you know uh, the positive word of mouth will help it once it comes out. Uh, Bodies, Bodies, Bodies will open on August 5th. We'll talk more about that once uh, we get closer to the release date later this uh, later this year. Uh, the next trailer we're going to talk about very quickly is also Dash Cam. This is a full-blown trailer. We got, I think we got a little bit of a teaser, uh, I believe it was like last year, uh, early last year too. But uh, we got a full-blown trailer for Dash Cam. This uh, comes from the team behind uh, Host movie that came out in 2020 during quarantine you know kind of one of the first big movies everyone was like oh this is the movie you have to watch during quarantine because we were still in quarantine or we had just gotten into quarantine at that point so uh this is dash cam uh same team writers directors rob savage uh directing this movie the movie has uh, also been circling the film festivals but uh fans will finally be able to watch it uh when it comes out in theaters and on vod on june 3rd of this year in the midst of a lockdown uh the movie is uh this is kind of like the little brief synopsis here uh in the midst of a lockdown musician annie starts to live stream with her fans as she drives around la but done with the pandemic lifestyle she escapes to the uk to visit her own bandmate and continues to live stream to her fans while there they come across an elderly woman who is being followed by someone uh, presumably looking to do her harm and from there chaos ensues and if you watch the trailer chaos ensues is probably the best way to um re- to really describe this trailer this trailer is all over the place uh in, a, in in kind of in a positive way it it starts off with Anne showing off annie and then you don't get the the fact that she's a musician or you know whatever but she's live streaming and you know and this is kind of how the movie is being described the movie is described as just this wild chaotic adventure and um a ride you know to put the pun in there but this from the trailer itself it also yeah that probably best describes what it is because it is all over the place there's just a multiple shot it looks like i don't know if maybe there's a supernatural element it looks like there's a supernatural element involved but then at the same time it doesn't look that way so i don't know you know what's i don't know what's going on from the trailer i just know that it's a lot of screaming and yelling and it is, you know, going to be in that kind of uh, POV, kind of found footage esque uh, fashion because uh, it looks like everything is being done through her live stream and uh, you know done through a, a dash cam camera as uh, as well. So um, this movie, like I mentioned, has also been making the film festival rounds and people have been just saying how buck wild it is, and I just can't wait for it. I was a really big fan of Host when it came out. Uh, I saw it right around the time that everyone else was kind of watching it and uh, I immediately fell for it and I, 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 I think I even tweeted like anything that this team does anything that Rob Savage does from this point forward I'm gonna watch uh, because he was able to turn a simple zoom call which there's been movies like that before but he was able to turn a zoom call in a timely way with the pandemic going on because the movie takes place during the pandemic as well and so does this they filmed this obviously during the pandemic because you know we're still in it but they filmed it as well during the pandemic and um you know he was able to turn that and just make something something quick it was it's not even 90 minutes it's like 80 minutes long or something like that so if you haven't seen host yet what are you doing go watch it it's it's a it's like i mentioned it's not that long it's like 80 minutes if that i don't even think it's that long i think it's even shorter than that i don't even think it's an hour to be completely honest with you yeah i don't think it's an i don't even think it's an hour uh so what are you doing go ahead and watch it it's 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 great movie uh, i can't really say anything else but i really i really liked it maybe i'll have to go back and watch it maybe my, my opinions have changed you know now they're out of quarantine but um yeah that was just like a time capsule of a thing that's just that still kind of hits hard uh because there's still stuff from that movie that i remember and i'm like yeah i'm not gonna do a zoom call <laughs> i'm not gonna look at the zoom call the same way ever again so and uh, the last trailer we're gonna talk about here is uh the new trailer for the black phone it is the, uh, the of course, the, the movie done by the same team that did Sinister and Doctor Strange, which are Robert C. Uh, writer uh, C. Robert Cargill and director Scott Derrickson. That follows 13-year-old Finney, uh, who was played by newcomer uh, Mason Thames, is approached by a mysterious man claiming to be a musician, a uh, magician, sorry, not musician, I'm still stuck on dash cam, uh, magician, played by Ethan Hawke, when in fact he is, in fact, the uh, grabber, as he's been coined by the uh, locals, who happens to be a child murderer as well. The title Black Phone comes into play when Finney is stuck in a room and is discon- and there is a disconnected phone on the wall that mysteriously rings and allows him to talk to Hawks' previous victims. 
The movie itself is based off a short story written by Joe Hill, which, of course, is the son of Stephen King. And the trailer, this trailer uh, does uh, a better job of showing off uh, Ethan Hawke's character. Um, it, it's A lot of the trailer from this one is, like, stuff that we've seen from the past trailer or kind of more, like, extended looks of what we've already seen. It doesn't really show off the whole movie, at least from what I was able to, to tell. But it does show off Hawk a little bit more. It does show off his mask that he wears. It looks like the mask is, like, separating into parts. And it looks like he's going to be wearing um, the mask in different ways when he's talking to, to Finny. Um, so, I don't know. It just it looks rather interesting. The movie uh, obviously has that supernatural bend to it. Uh, we get to see a little bit more here in this trailer. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, it's Scott Derrickson, it's uh, C. Robert Cargill, uh, they did Doctor Strange together, but more importantly, they did Sinister together, and I think everyone's been waiting to see, you know, their next horror movie together, like myself, and, um, this is it, and I'm completely on board for this, I've been looking forward to this, I remember, this is supposed to, this was already supposed to come out, and they, uh, Blumhouse, uh, pushed it back, or Blumhouse Universal pushed it back to the summer, to June 24th, that's when it's gonna come out. Um, of this year and everyone was like really upset because the movie had already been had already been played at um, some film festivals I think it was South by Southwest and it just got major love like there was no negative feedback from the movie at, at least you know at that time so uh, the fact that they're you know they pushed it back to a prime summer spot really showed that they had a lot of faith in the black phone and um, from this trailer, it, I think, you know, uh, so the trailer has, you know, some some qu some quotes from some reviews that are out there. So uh, I, I'm looking forward to it. I have been looking forward to it. Uh, this trailer just, you know, sold me on it even even more than I already was. And that's not the only trailer dropped. Uh, Universal decided to drop the new trailer for Jurassic World Dominion. Uh, and it has a bunch of brand spanking new uh, footage, a lot of from a lot of footage from the dino from the dinosaur dinosaur action and uh our legacy characters and our legacy characters uh you know mixing it up with uh you know the the, the new batch of Jurassic World uh Jurassic World characters in there there's some pretty cool shots uh, I I'm I'm not going to you know sit here and, and and you know go through it all uh with you guys because you know I, I know some people are very uh, touchy about stuff but there's a lot of cool shots in this thing and uh it looks jam packed and action wise and everything else so um you know there's a report that came out said this is going to be you know one of the longest Jurassic Park movies out there so it looks like it you know I, I think you know this kind of being the uh at least the final chapter of this new trilogy of Jurassic uh world movies uh, it makes sense that you know they would go you know go big or go home right so um I, you know probably won't be the last Jurassic Park world movie that we get but the 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 fact that we're getting this uh, with characters the legacy characters and everything like that and just the way it looks uh yeah this this looks kind of this looks pretty big and pretty big and epic and uh crazy once uh, it finally comes out which will be on june 10th so there you go but those are your trailers that came out this week of course all the trailers will be linked down below in the description slash show notes area if i missed any trailers i will be sure to put them down uh there as well like i always uh, try to do so um yeah all right those are your trailers let us move on to this week's movie news items of the week all right let's get to the movie news like i mentioned WonderCon is going on uh so we have some uh just you know we're gonna like i mentioned we're gonna bounce around with the WonderCon news uh like this one warner brothers dropped some tidbits of their upcoming slate a lot of it of course was uh dc properties like i mentioned earlier uh, but this particular news item isn't about dc uh this comes from the sizzle reel that warner brothers put out to the investors and everyone else in attendance at CinemaCon, and uh, they announced that the nun 2 uh, is in the works it's getting it's getting another movie uh, it's getting a sequel so uh, plot details and release dates are, uh, are are you know none at the moment uh, we don't know any of that but um, it has been noted that Akilah Cooper who wrote Malignant is writing the script or at least expected to write the script for The Nun 2 and uh, we can probably assume that James Wan will return to at least produce in some capacity like he has for all the other uh, Conjuring spin-off movies uh, Bonnie Aarons who played the titled Nun character of course uh, aka Valak she could return as well probably because I don't see how you can replace I don't see how you can replace her uh, considering she's made she made that character very iconic amongst horror fans and in the Conjuring universe itself uh, directing the movie horror site Bloody Disgusting reports that Michael Chavez 
will direct the movie. Chavez has a history with Juan and the Conjuring movies. He directed The Curse of La Llorona, which isn't directly connected to the Conjuring movies, but there is a connection there. Um, even though they tried to sell it as kind of its own thing, they, in the movie itself, they uh, there was something in passing that it was connected to it, to the Conjuring movies. But he also did direct the last Conjuring movie, The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. Uh, so obviously he has some experience in that world, uh, with that world, and uh, with James Wan as well. The movie didn't have a lot of fanfare. I don't think there was a lot, of, a lot of fans for for the movie. I myself was. I thought the movie was okay. I, I didn't think it was anything uh, special. But it did pretty. It did really well. Not pretty well. It did really well at the box office and made three hundred and sixty-five million dollars worldwide off its very modest twenty-two million dollar budget. So the fact that it took this long for it to get a sequel is astounding to me. But uh, there you go. It would be interesting to see where they go with this. Of course, the, the the nun character was connected to the events of The Conjuring 2. And the solo movie itself was uh, was a prequel kind of to the to the whole thing uh, along with, you know, the first uh, or the second, actually. Annabelle at that time was, you know, the oldest prequel. But now I think the nun was in that case. But uh, they could do whatever they want. They could play around with the timeline. Obviously, the events between the Nun and the Conjuring Two were very uh, had a very big gap, so it'll be interesting to kind of see what they uh, they do uh, they do with that. Let's move on. Netflix has announced they have acquired Alejandro G. Inarito's next film, which is called Bardo. Uh, which, unlike his past work, especially his last movie, which was The Revenant, uh, this will be a comedy. The movie is a quote nostalgic comedy set against the epic personal journey. It chronicles the story of a renowned Mexican journalist and documentary filmmaker who returns home and works through his and works through an existential crisis as he grapples with his identity, familiar or fam- family relation. I don't know why. I, whatever family relationships. Don't ask me. Uh, the folly of his memories as well as the past of his country. He seeks answers in his past to reconcile who he is in the present. So that's a synopsis. And Yuritsu did co-write the movie, along with his uh, beautiful and um, Birdman co-writer, Nicolas Chiacobon. Maybe that's how you pronounce his last name. Uh, Bardo is already in post-production. They already filmed the movie. The film, the, the movie, uh, they stopped filming back uh, last September. So Netflix just picked this up. Uh, no word yet on when uh, they'll release it. But if they have it, and it's, you know, maybe done already. If that, uh, we can probably expect it sometime around the end of the year. Maybe around Oscar season. It is Alejandro Gini Ritu. He obviously, he has a history with winning Oscars with Birdman. Uh, so, I mean, we'll, we'll have to wait and see on that. But uh, I'm excited for what he does, especially if it's a comedy. I mean... Obviously, all his work so far has been a lot of um, has been a lot of dramas and stuff like that. I mean, Birdman had some comedic moments in it, but it wasn't like a straightforward comedy. So it it seems like this might be might be a dramedy, but you know they've they've made it a point to say that it is a a comedy. So we'll you know we'll have to see. We'll have to wait and see on that. That motion studio Lenka is teaming up with creator of the Ozark series on Netflix. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna say his name because I'm gonna mispronounce it, and I definitely do not want to mispronounce his name. Uh, but there. <laughs> They're working on a movie, um, a new movie called The Night Gardener. It's an original story by uh, by the creator who was center that will center on a young man in a rural Missouri in rural Missouri who's trying to keep his family together in the wake of a tragedy. Link's history of movies is obviously uh, they touch on the fantastical side, the kind of not supernatural but kind of like the you know the, again the, the fantasy side of stuff. Uh, so this early log line makes it more intriguing. Uh, what it is, and obviously Ozark, uh, very heavy drama, uh, you know, uh, very, very, yeah, very heavy drama. It's, it's not necessarily something that Lenka usually touches on. Um, I mean, they have drama in their stuff, and, you know, they get very heavy, but for the most part, uh, very fantastical kind of family movies, so it'll be interesting to kind of see how um, the shift in this is. Uh, President and CEO of Lenka Studios, Travis Knights, who did direct the studios, Kubo and the Two Strings, which is personally one of my favorites, and Bumblebee will direct the movie once he finishes up his current movie he's directing, uh, which is a, um, I don't, I, can't, I think it's an animated movie, it's called Wildwood, uh, it's based off a novel by singer-songwriter uh, Colin uh, Malloy from The Decemberist, so he's working on that. But uh, this is pretty intriguing, um, Ozark's still on my list of stuff to watch, it was actually going to be the next thing that I was going to binge watch, uh, especially with his last season uh, coming up this year. Uh, but I started watching something else that I've been meaning to watch for a little bit. So um, it got kind of pushed back a little bit, but I'm going to watch it. So it'd be interesting to kind of see how that plays out. I've never heard nothing but good things about Ozark. So, you know, they're, they're 
All right, moving on. The live-action adaptation of the anime franchise Robotech has found its director and Reese Thomas, uh, now famously known for directing episodes of Dis- of the Disney Plus series Hawkeye. The anime, for those who are not in the know, was set in the future where humanity is under attack by an alien army and to fight off the invaders, humans explore the wreckage of a fallen alien spaceship and develop their own giant mechs that can be uh, that can help defend the planet. Uh, no, not Voltron. This is different, something different. This is something different. Uh, the movie was... Or this is not a knock on Voltron or Robotech because, you know, obviously the 80s, they were very popular with, with, with robots. Uh, the movie was originally set up to be directed by uh, Andy Muschietti, who, of course, directed the It movies. Uh, he, he most recently, of course, directed the Flash movie. Uh, and uh, writer Jason Fouch, I think that's how you pronounce his last name, uh, he, he wrote uh, Wonder Woman, the first Wonder Woman. But that was back when the project was first in talks and when it was first announced in 2017. Obviously, since then, uh, it's been pretty quiet on that front until now. Uh, currently, the script is being redone by Brian Gatewood and Alessandro uh, Tanaka. Um, they have done the TV series Comrade Detective, uh, which uh, Reese Thomas directed a bunch of episodes in as well, and also the TV series Dice. So they're they're doing that. Now with a new director in tow and the script that has been redone, we could probably be looking at Robotech finally getting in front of the cameras soon i don't want to say soon but sooner rather than later obviously next up another cinema con uh, little news tidbit here this comes from the disney side during the disney cinema con panel it was revealed when we will get our first look at the avatar sequel and the title for the avatar sequel the long-awaited uh probably much forgotten about probably too late for it to really come out sequel to avatar will be titled avatar the way of the water and we'll get our first look at it very, very soon as the trailer will be connected to Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness when that comes out. It will play in theaters for a week and then it will come out officially online after that unless Disney was, you know, the, the response is so heavy that Disney decides to put it up online before then or, you know, someone leaks it, uh, which will probably, you know, you never know, could be the case. Uh, the Way of Water will take us back to Pandora, and we'll see Jake Sully, of course, once again played by Sam Worthington, and Atiri, once again played by Zoe Saldana as parents, and will give us our look into the ocean world of Pandora, obviously, with the title of The Way of the Water. It uh, obviously will be based in the ocean. The rest of the cast of Avatar, The Way of the Water, includes the returning faces of Stephen Lang, somehow, Joel David Moore, CCH Pounder, and somehow, again, Sir Courtney Weaver, New cast members include Kiff Curtis, Eddie Falco, Jermaine Clement, Vin Diesel, Michelle Yeoh, and Kate Winslet. The Way of the Water, Avatar The Way of the Water, will finally come out on December 16th, 2022. That's this year, in case, you know, something again happens and they delay it. Its sequels will be coming out every two, uh, every other two years. So Avatar 3 will come out in 2024. Uh, the next one will come out in 2026. And the last one will come out in 20. 20- 28 i didn't mind the first avatar you know i wasn't on the bandwagon of hating the uh, the movie just because you know I, I don't know why people hated the movie really i mean you know other you know besides the fact that it was you know it kind of felt like it was you know a lot of some other movies like i think it was uh was it um dances with wolves uh was one that a lot of people compare it to but um i didn't mind the first avatar i think the action was great james cameron of course will come back to direct these movies he has directed his movie they have been working on these movies they've been shooting them back to back so but the movies you know it kind of became just a joke and a meme that you know these movies kept getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back and now we finally are here and um you know we'll see uh we'll see what happens with with that am i excited to see a new avatar i guess you know they showed some footage at CinemaCon, um showing you know some of the world uh, of pandora and some of the underwater stuff james cameron did shoot this with the 3d technology that he bought over to avatar and obviously he's been working on improving that and i guess he has and you know they'll be you know we'll, we'll be getting a 3d movie i don't know how well that craze will start obviously when avatar came out it kind of just you know set a boom in hollywood of hollywood just post converting everything to 3d or shooting stuff in 3d will it happen again who knows obviously we'll be it's COVID time i don't know how they're gonna do with the 3d glasses but we'll see what happens with with that. Uh, am I excited? I don't know. I'll, have, I'll hold my enthusiasm until I see um, a full blown trailer for it. But uh, there you go. We'll get our first look at it in the multiverse. Uh, Doctor Strange in the multiverse of madness when it comes out in theaters next week. All right. So let's continue on with the movie news. The upcoming animated Super Mario Brothers movie has officially been delayed. Uh, it's been delayed next year on April seventh. It was originally supposed to come out this year at the end of the year on December twenty first. 
No reason uh, announced for the delay, but it was announced through Nintendo themselves. The movie was first announced back all the way in 2018, when Nintendo announced they will be teaming up with Illumination Entertainment, of course the studio behind the Despicable Me and Minions movies, but stayed quiet until production started last year in 2021. Uh, when the voice cast, or not when production started, but when at least the voice cast was announced. Uh, and everyone, of course, had an opinion on that. Uh, the voice cast, of course, will include Chris Pratt as Mario. It's so uh, funny to say, even to this day. Uh, Anya Taylor-Joy will voice Princess Peach. Seth Rogen will voice Donkey Kong. Jack Black will be Browser. Charlie Day is Luigi. Keegan-Michael Key will be Toad. Uh, other voice cast members include Fred Armisen, Michael, uh, or Kevin Michael Richardson, and the original voice of Mario, Charles... Uh, Matt Nett, uh, I'm not pretty sure I pronounced his last, his last name wrong, uh, he will make a cameo voice appearance in the movie, although what exactly it is, is uh, unknown at the moment. Universal, in response to the d- delaying Super Mario Brothers, has instead uh, decided to delay yet another movie, but it was pretty much just to make sure that a movie is put in its place. Universal will now uh, move back Puss in Boots The Last Wish from its September release date to the release date that was for uh, that was intended for Super Mario Brothers, which is December 21st. Again, no reason for the delay. Maybe, you know, and the animation sticking a little longer or, you know, they just I don't know. I'm assuming that's the only reason. I mean, that's really the only reason why you would delay an animated movie, right? Is that the animation's not ready yet uh, or they don't feel that it will be ready by uh, by that release date. So moving on to um, not necessarily another delay delay but a project that's been in the works for a little bit uh that people have um you know i don't want to say up in arms about but are people uh, eagerly anticipating uh what it's all about uh it's but you know this is another one that's been very quiet on the uh adaptation front wicked uh which will be directed by john m chu you know uh he took the twitter this week and made a major announcement that the, per, that the adaptation of wicked uh will be split into two movies and they will be coming out a year apart from each other. For those not in the know, the musical, the very popular musical, the award-winning musical, which, again, if you've been living under a rock, you probably don't know what Wicked is, but it does center on the witches from the land of Oz and the unlikely friendship that is formed between the Wicked Witch of the West, which is played, which will be played by Ariana Grande, and Glinda the Good Witch, which will be played by Cynthia Erivo. Now, the reason for the split into two movies was with uh, Cho and crew didn't want to disappoint the massive fan base by cutting anything from the musical that would be important or that fans would love to see on the big screen he did release a statement it's pretty big but that was pretty much the gist of it that he didn't want to you know uh, cut anything down or take tone stuff down or just trim everything down that was important and what made wicked so important in the first place uh, the movie has been tough to get in around like i mentioned you know this thing's been in the works for a while and chu also admitted that uh admitted rather that the movie has been tough to get off the ground which is why they've been taking so long because they've just been hacking away at it and uh, you know, finally, I guess they decide, you know what, the best course of action is to just, you know, release the movie into two parts. So Wicked Part 1 will open this holiday season, or not this holiday season, will open the holiday season of 2024. So it's still ways, ways away, uh, but uh, it will probably start, you know, rolling camera sometime later this year or sometime maybe next year. I'm, I'm assuming they'll probably, you know, film them back to back since... Again, they're releasing them uh, essentially, you know, back to back as well. Uh, of course, part two will then come out in 2025. Let's move on to, uh, for me, one of the one of the bigger movie news items, but not the biggest movie news item of the week. This is really just more of an annoyance for me, just because I know why. I think everyone kind of knows why this happened. So it, it's even more, it kind of uh, more annoying and a bit surprising, mainly because production had already started. So filming had already started on Fast X or Fast and the Furious 10, and they've already lost the director, Justin Lin. Uh, Lin did release a statement basically saying the decision to step down was, quote, difficult, uh, but it did say that he will remain on the movie as producer while there is no reason, at least at first, uh, when the statement, when that you know statement was uh, released, uh, some outlets reported later on finding out that Lynn stepped away due to creative differences, which, again, considering the history of the Fast and the Furious movies, everyone kind of came to the connection that those creative differences came from working with Vin Diesel, 
who of course is a producer on the movie and diesel himself hasn't said anything at least at the time of this recording but uh lynn started off directing the franchise uh since tokyo drift and stayed on until fast and the furious six before he stepped away to work on other stuff and of course he came back with that uh at fast and the furious 9 or f9 as it's called and some fans including myself were very happy to see lynn back because again lynn you know he pretty much reinvigorated the franchise he did something different uh with tokyo drift that fans have uh accepted and not accepted and then you know he did fast and furious which you know brought you know a lot of those core characters back and started the, you know the the movement of getting this these movies back to what you know everyone loves which is you know these characters uh and then of course you know fast and the furious 5 which pretty much changed the franchise from street racing to kind of saving the world heist movies or not necessarily saving the world movies but heist movies and then fast and the furious 6 came along which was you know also a heist movie but also a you know kind of saving the world type movie and then you know obviously we had fast and the furious 7 and fast uh fast and the furious 8 and, and f9 which uh lynn came back for uh that said reports have shown that diesel you know like i mentioned has been difficult to work with uh actions that drove you know dwayne johnson away from uh, the main franchise you know hobbs and shaw not included he's gonna keep doing those movies because it has nothing to do with vin diesel so you know lynn i guess finally saw that v- diesel was difficult to work with like i mentioned at the beginning uh they had already started filming they had been a week into filming already you know they started production last week and and you know uh, i don't even think it was a full week that lynn you know was there on set with everybody filming and um yeah that that's i don't know that's that's you know it's kind of a, a bummer that this is happening production will continue apparently they will shoot uh, a lot of the second unit stuff but even then it's not that much and i think i just i saw a report earlier today that uh it's costing universal uh pictures somewhere close to or up to a million dollars a day as they try to find a replacement for the movie uh they have not found one again at least at the time of this recording if they find one then and i haven't done editing and published the podcast yet i'll put it here but i'm just gonna say good luck to whoever they end up getting because they have to deal with vin diesel and his um you know very you know public actions or not public actions but it's very kind of uh temperamental attitude i guess if you want to call it that uh it, it's it's again it's just annoying it was it started with fast and the furious 7 where you know we started you know hearing all these stories about how or not 7 i think it, it wasn't yeah was it 7 it might have been 7 i think it started at seven. i think there was rumblings in 7 and then fast and the furious 8 where kind of everything just kind of broke out and and you know became you know notorious that uh vin diesel was very difficult to work with and he, you know was very full of himself being a producer on the franchise for for so long and you know having to you know deal with this so i don't know you know it's it it sucks i i love justin lynn i was really happy to see him come back if it wasn't anything that uh, it's hard for me to imagine that it was nothing to do with vin diesel because vin diesel again going back to the fast and furious 7 story um or the fate of the furious as it's officially called you know the the reports came out that you know diesel was unhappy that the studio decided to add scenes with dwayne johnson and jason statham because you know he was the star of the movie uh even though (laughs) even though you can make the argument that you know vin diesel did wasn't the star i mean you i mean he was a important part of the fast the first fast and the furious movie but that movie really belonged to to uh paul walker's character brian but you know that that's you know again argument's sake you know whatever you want to call it that that, there is that i I don't know man it's just it's it sucks it sucks that this franchise look you can say whatever you want about the fast and furious franchise you can you can like it you can dislike it you can you know you can think it's over the top and it is over the top i i'm a fan i've been a fan of the franchise since pretty much the very beginning and to see it to see where it is now compared to what it was and how it started obviously it's a very vastly different thing and there was a producer i think even yeah it was it was it was like a month or something uh before production started uh, i forgot who's who the producer was but the producer was like maybe we're gonna you know scale down the fast and furious movies in the future or you know i think i don't know if he was talking about 10 or he was talking about the next one but he was like yeah we're, we're probably gonna scale down the um the, the 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 franchise a little bit and go back to how it 
began. I don't know how you can do that considering where this franchise has gone. Because I think if it go, I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing it go back. I think, you know, fans, the hardcore fans would be okay with that. But I think they've painted themselves into a corner where it's impossible for them to go back to the basics. And I think they've also painted themselves into a corner where Vin Diesel probably won't allow them to do that. Vin Diesel's going to want this franchise to go crazy and go nuts because that's what the fans expect from these movies now. And I don't know if it will be easy for him to be like, yeah, let's, just, yeah, let's just go, let's go, let's go back and do that. Let's not make me superhuman where I can survive my car getting shooting out of an airplane or, uh, you know, my car being flung around down a mountainside. I don't know. I just, it's frustrating. And again, if, if it comes out that Justin Lin left for other creative reasons, not because of Vin Diesel, then okay, then that's okay. You know, again, you know, I know it's easy to pin everything on Diesel because it's famously been linked that he has been difficult to work with. But we'll see. But um, regardless, F, uh, or Fast X rather, still has its release date of May 19th, 2023. Again, it's costing Universal money to, to just have the actors just sit around and not do anything. So I'm sure they're going to find someone. Hopefully they find someone good, you know, someone you know, that's, you know, relatable, some, or not relatable, but someone who's reliable, rather. Let, let's just, let's just hope to see what, what happens. Moving on, uh, like I mentioned, CinemaCon's going on, so we're back to the cinema, CinemaCon news. Sony was the first to really break, uh, break into the CinemaCon, uh, panel and sizzle reels and stuff, and they announced a bunch of stuff through their sizzle reels. So the first one is that they're, we're getting another Ghostbusters movie. You know, Ghostbusters Afterlife came out last year, uh, so Ghostbusters is, um, coming back but other than that it wasn't it was just kind of like it was a sizzle reel and i guess they had a logo on there that they were going to do another ghostbuster so there's no word yet on uh if anybody from afterlife will, will come back there's no word if jason reitman will come back to direct although jason reitman has publicly said that he would love to hand off the franchise to someone else but um you know obviously if pretty sure if sony pays him enough uh he'll, he'll come he'll come back to uh in that sizzle in that sizzle reel why I keep saying that wrong? Uh, in that sizzle reel, uh, they also announced and confirmed that there is another Venom movie coming. Which, again, no word on yet on who's coming back. We can assume that Tom Hardy will come back. Um, not only that, Sony Pictures revealed they are developing yet another Spider-Man spinoff in El Muerto, which is the dead, for those who don't speak Spanish. But the bigger bit is that Sony has attached singer Bad Bunny to the lead role. The character whose real name is Juan Carlos really you can't get more generic than that uh with a hispanic name he is a super powered wrestler who originally fought spider-man in a charity wrestling match in which he nearly unmasked spider-man before becoming uh before getting stung but after his oppressor el dorado came to claim his life he was saved by spider-man after which the two teamed up to defeat him uh apparently it was bad bunny who wanted to do the superhero movie and found the character of el muerto what he was kind of uh combing through uh, all the Spider-Man stuff that Sony, I guess, allowed him to uh, to look at. If you're wondering, man, that's a that's a really weird connection. Why Bad Bunny of all people, uh, Sony Pictures and Bad Bunny have a relationship because Bad Bunny will appear in uh, Bullet Train, which was set to come out uh, later this year in July. Uh, he also has been acting. You know, he's, it's, the acting bug has uh, kind of been Bad Bunny a little bit. He was in the last season of Narcos Mexico. Uh, he also appeared in another movie called Cassandro with uh, Gail Garcia Bernal. I don't know if they, I don't know if he's already filmed that or he's going to film that, but um, you know he, he's got that, and then he's got the, the you know the wrestling thing going on. You know it, it's it isn't crazy because he is a self proclaimed wrestling fan, um, and um, you know he he's wrestled a few matches at uh, or in WWE, and he wrestled at WrestleMania of all places, um, not the last WrestleMania, but the WrestleMania before that. So. You know, uh, you know, he's he's got the connection for it, so th there is that. But, but what the hell? <laughs> of, of, of all the Spider-Man characters, nothing against Bad Bunny. Like no, nothing against them. I'm, I, 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 you play a Bad Bunny song for me. I'm gonna assume that you're you're telling me the truth because I've never really sought out or or heard a Bad Bunny song in, intentionally. But El Muerto, really? I mean, look, I am all for representation. Obviously, you know, on the Hispanic side, for me, it would be awesome to, to, to get that. Uh, and of course, you know, and any other, you know, ethnicity and race as, as well. Representation matters in Hollywood and it should. But El Muerto, really? <laughs> That's who you go with? You can't just, if you want a, 
uh, if you want, you know, the Hispanic audience to come see a Spider-Man movie, which, you know, most of them are probably already doing, you know who you can get into a live action movie? Miles Morales. <laughs> He's right there. But no, you have to go with El Muerto. I don't know. It's just, ugh. Why? Why are you doing this, Sony? Why? You make it very hard for us to root for you. You're making it very, very hard. So I add El Muerto to the list of uh, Superman, or Superman, of Spider-Man spinoffs that Sony is working on. Because they have, of course, um, the Venom movies, which, you know, we already talked about. We got another one on the way. Uh, you got the Madam Web movie, which they, you know, which will probably, I guess, will start filming soon because they have a release date for that already. Uh, they got Craven the Hunter, which is also going to start production very soon. They, uh, they're they they're working on that Spider-Woman movie that I, I, I'm i assuming is still happening. It's been very quiet on the uh, on that front. But, uh, yeah, they're, you know, they're, they're, and, and maybe whatever they're doing with Morbius and they're pro i guess they're still trying to do a sinister six movie you know that's just they can't let that go <laughs> so i don't know well we'll oh all right whatever let's move on let's move on to the big movie news item of the week uh which also came from CinemaCon. but uh this is something that we've been ex- expecting and anticipating and here it is and no surprise during the warner brothers CinemaCon panel it was announced that a sequel to the batman is happening and on top of that robert pattinson will return as bruce wayne slash batman and writer director matt reeves will also return to direct the move comes after the batman has been released on hbo max where it has reported that it has been viewed in 4.1 million households and has clocked in at the box office uh, worldwide with 760 million which is a pretty impressive number especially with uh, COVID going on uh, no word yet on who else will return but we have our main duo back in Pattinson and Reeves and that's a good start in the meantime HBO Max does have that Batman spinoff series in the works which will uh, of course follow Colin Farrell's the Penguin or he will be at least involved in that so there you go again no real surprise that a batman sequel is in the works you know everyone's been anticipating it matt reeves has said he's wanted it uh pattinson said he'd be down to come back as well reeves also you know has meant has mentioned you know certain things he would love to do for a sequel i think he said he wanted to do like a mr freeze in the sequel you know everyone's kind of you know obviously the the, the joker deleted scene that was released online has uh led people to think that uh you know, Reeves is going to do the Joker in the sequel, but that's not necessarily the case. Maybe he's just, you know, maybe he just, you know, he just wanted to put the Joker in there because, you know, that's what it is. You know, obviously there is, you know, the, the whole argument that Batman has a ton of other villains. Yes, that that is the tr- that is the case. But uh, I know Mr. Freeze is one that Matt Reeves has uh, initially pointed out. Um, and that would be interesting to see how he does Mr. Freeze in this, you know, universe that really, for a lot of extended purposes, feels very grounded. Um so it'll be interesting to see how he is able to pull that off. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we'll have to wait wait and see on that. Uh, Court of Owls is another one that people thought, you know, the movie kind of is kind of a, it would be a good segue to get Court of Owls in there. Hush is another one. We talked about that on the, on the, on my reaction podcast. We talked about Hush. I would, I would really like to see, I think a Scarecrow would fit in this universe too, but I would really like to see like a Doctor Strange or Doctor Strange. <laughs> Hugo Strange. I got Doctor Strange in my mind. Sorry. Um, I would really like to see a Hugo Strange. I think Hugo Strange would be really effective in this uh, in this universe that Reeves created too. I think that'd be really cool. I've always kind of wanted to see a Hugo Strange in a in a in a big screen Batman movie. I think that would be really cool. But we'll have to wait and see. Uh, I trust Reeves. I think a lot of people will trust Reeves to see whatever he does uh, with Batman. Uh, and uh, obviously, we're, we're very excited to see what they do for uh, for the sequel. So yeah. That's it. That's all the movie news I got for you guys. Um, obviously, if anything big drops, uh, like really big, I'll drop it right here. But if not, let us move on to this week's movies that are coming out in theaters and streaming for all your viewing pleasures. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. We only got two movies coming out this weekend. Uh, one of them is on streaming. It's on Hulu. It's called Crush, inspiring young actor joins her high school track team and later discovers that she that real love feels like when she finds herself falling for an unexpected teammate uh this movie stars rowan blanchard uh probably mainly known for um the girl meets world series i know she's done other stuff but i think that's kind of where everyone really kind of knows her from at least that's where i kind of know her from mainly 
Uh, we also have, um, I'm going to mispronounce her last name. I'm going to mispronounce her whole name, or at least her first name, because um, I just know it. Uh, she was the voice of Moana, Aaliyah, Aaliyah Carlovo. I, 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 I'm, I am so sorry. I just butchered her whole name. But she was the voice of Moana. She, uh, Moana. She's also in there. Asif Mani is also in there, and so is Megan Mullally. I've only seen the trailer for this once, and I actually saw it on TV because they're kind of promoting it. Uh, they're promoting Hulu, and then they kind of showed this, and it... I, I don't know. I, I I just I don't I don't think it's marketed toward me <laughs> mainly, but it it's it looks it looks fine. I guess you know it's a it's a teen comedy. It's a teen romance comedy kind of thing, and I don't know. It's it's the, the, the there you go. Uh, so there's that. Uh, but la- lastly, the only the only real big movie coming out this weekend in theaters is Memory, and this is the new Liam Neeson movie. It's actually a remake of a 2003 Belgian film that itself is actually based off a uh, a novel. And it follows an assassin for hire, which of course played by Liam Neeson in the movie, finds that he's becoming a target after he refuses to complete a job for a dangerous criminal organization. Obviously, you also see in the trailers, in the TV spots, that he's suffering from something, um, maybe memory loss or something of some sort. Guy Pierce also stars in the movie, along with Ray Stevenson and Monica Bellucci. It is also directed by Martin Campbell, who has directed GoldenEye, The Mask of Zorro, Casino Royale. Um, the, the last thing he directed was The Prodigy, which uh, the one with uh, Maggie Q, Samuel Jackson, and uh, Michael Keaton. This looks okay. You know, Neeson has been doing a lot of these kind of, you know, what feels like straight to DVD movies, but I can't really blame him for, you know, getting out there and, and, and you know, doing doing work. But I don't know. This The last Black Light, which came out earlier this year, wasn't very good. Um, but, uh, you know, I think he's just kind of just doing these movies so he can maybe do something that he's really passionate about. At least that's the hope anyway, but there you go. Uh, so those are your only your movie releases coming out this weekend. Memory out in theaters and then uh, Crush, which is on Hulu. Kind of, It's a nice, you know, kind of if you uh, unless you want to go watch, you know, Memory in theaters. It is kind of a nice uh, catch up week. There's a lot of great stuff out there. The Northman, which I saw this week, um, this week. Very, very good. Uh, you also have the uh, Unbearable Way to Master Talent still in theaters everywhere. Everything all at once is still playing in theaters. That's getting a lot of buzz, you know, uh, from fans who are finally able to see because it's playing in more theaters. Uh, obviously, you know, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness next week. So uh, I think I saw some theaters are still playing Spider-Man or, you know, playing Spider-Man for a limited run this weekend. So if you want to go check that out still. Uh, so, yeah, uh, there's just a lot of cool stuff uh, out there in theaters and streaming right now. Um, so if you're not interested in any of those movies, this would be a nice catch up week. If you know, you're like me and want to watch some new stuff over the weekend. Ambulance is also still in theaters. You want to go check that out. I thought that was very good too. So that's everybody. Thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast this week. I very much appreciate it. Uh, you guys have been awesome. You guys are always awesome. You guys are always great for anyone who listens. Be sure to check out all the links down below in the description slash show notes area, everything, social media, where you can find the podcast, uh, on other multiple platforms, uh, instead of the one maybe that you're listening to. So yeah, thank you guys so much for everything uh, this week. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm sorry for the kind of rushed feel or potential audio issues in this podcast. But like I said, it's going to be a crazy kind of um, few weeks uh, with the school year ending and everything like that. So uh, thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast this week. I very much appreciate it. Uh, I'm a sub, by the way. I'm not an actual student. I'm, I'm a substitute teacher. I just make that clear. I think I made that clear in the, in the past. But anyway, anyone, any new listeners out there. But uh, anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for listening. I will see you guys next week, hopefully, you know, schedule and life permitting. But uh, yeah, thank you guys so much. And I will uh, see you guys next week. Be good people. Be safe. And as always, go watch some movies. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. Give it up. Movies.